Hey guys, how you doing? When I was around at Matt Easton's house from the Scholar Gladiatoria channel fairly recently, we recorded a video on self-defense. I also recorded a second video where I essentially ask Matt questions and he answers them live on camera. But because we just recorded a video, we forgot to do a proper intro for the second video. So, this is it. Um, if you enjoy this, then I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. And um, if you do, make sure you get that bell on. Hi guys, here with Matt again, still in the same household bubble. <laughs> um, so, I'm just going to ask Matt some questions. Tell I, don't, me I don't know what's coming, no, so no. I'm a, bit, a little bit nervous now. <laughs> um, so, the first question is, what is your channel about? It's the Matt Easton channel. <laughs> it's about no, him. So, so. Do you know what? He's not actually kidding. When, I remember sitting in his house when he was saying, I'm going to start making videos on YouTube. And it was literally just because he wanted to tell people stuff. <laughs> well, I tell you what, and, and, and I've bored a lot fewer people uh, in my close circles <laughs> since I've got a YouTube channel to do that on. No, but um, it's basically a HEMA channel. And I think, you know, uh, when I started doing things that weren't just HEMA, that in many cases got more views because there's obviously humor is very fringe yes. interest and if I'm talking about <laughs> try doing unarmed humor yeah the it's, it's, it's the fringe of the fringe and uh, when I started doing things about uh, TV shows and movie fights and that kind of stuff yeah. and they got a lot more views well obviously I thought well I'll do some more of those because that's kind of like a gateway drug to getting people into the channel and they then learn about HEMA but the, yeah. the original point was to always to sort of spread the word of European martial arts um, but the channel's grown beyond that, and it basically is everything, not everything that I'm interested in, because I have interests that I haven't yet featured on the channel, but might feature on I the channel we, one day. I think we know what the next uh, question's going to be. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it, it's all of the sort of related interests, so it's everything from, you know, knife making to movies to fencing to other martial arts, um, history and different aspects of history and that's something in 2021 I'm going to be looking at trying to bring more into the channel is more just general history actually which isn't necessarily yeah. military history or weapon history uh, but just things that I know that my viewers will be interested in yeah so. so what's your most popular video I'm not 100% sure but I think it's a video I did very early on um, about what's the best sword in a sword fight, in an unarmoured duel, basically. A one-on-one -on -one okay. unarmoured sword fight. And ever since I did that video, I was never really happy with it. I've been intending to <laughs> remake it. Okay. Not necessarily that my conclusions would be different or that even that the yeah. overall content would be very, very different, but I've come on a long way in my presentational and my editing and everything else, and it was a very crude video filmed in my garden room. Yeah. Just all in one take, you know, very off the cuff, so... I would prefer to do a more polished version of it. Okay. Well, we'll um, look forward to it. <laughs> What's your favourite video? Of mine? Yeah, absolutely. Of all the videos you've made and put out there, which is, which is the one that you think should be the, the most popular? Well, so I've done quite a few videos about the Roman pilum, actually, which are... I don't know where they are. They're over here, actually. Um, but no, I've, I've, that'll be out of shot. Yeah, be. yeah. But there are some Roman pilums, so javelins, uh, specialised throwing spears. Um, and I'm quite proud of the work I've done with the pilum so far, and there's certainly more to do. <laughs> That's not a sentence I ever thought I'd hear anyone <laughs> say. Um, and I made a mini documentary about... The, the Roman okay. Pilum and this is on a playlist that I've created on my channel which is supposed to have more mini documentaries on and the idea is to make uh, look at one topic and make a half hour video with solid research images and make it a little bit more documentary like than the okay. typical YouTube video yeah so that's so far one of the videos I'm the most personally happy with it doesn't mean that it got the most views or did fantastically well or anything else it's just that's what I'd like to do more of. Uh, okay. And, and I, I, that's important to me, actually, is that I try not to always just follow the trends and always just do lots of what's popular. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to be motivated enough to keep doing it. Yeah. And if and it's not fun, then you stop. 
Yeah, and I, I, so there's there's a there's a there's a movie I won't name it, but there's a movie where there's a nice quote that I paraphrase, but it's something along the lines of, "If the perfect if your perfect job doesn't exist, then create it." And I kind of feel a bit like that about YouTube channels or videos. It's kind of like, well, just because the audience doesn't necessarily appreciate this yet, make yep. them appreciate it, and with your enthusiasm and just throwing stuff at them, and that's happened a bit with the nineteenth century. Uh, sort of military saber and and colonial warfare stuff that I feature on my channel. It was really like fringe of a fringe interest at the yeah. beginning, but now more and more people are getting interested in it. Partly because me and other people talk about it lots, yeah. and so people go, "Oh, that's actually quite interesting." And then you know you create the market for it. So, what's the next video you're going to make? I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've been filming a whole bunch of uh, videos today, um, but the next video I'm going to make is probably a review video, actually thinking about it. I've got, okay. uh, I've got a couple of Japanese-style swords I've got to okay. review and test, so it's probably going to be one of those. I've also got some HEMA training equipment to review, um, but I also have some sort of topic videos to do as well, okay. and I'm not sure what the next one will be, uh, but there is one about Viking sword hilts. And I, that might be another mini okay. documentary style video. Okay. So. <laughs> so now I can say I can look forward to that one without, <laughs> without lying. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the biggest animal you think you could beat in a fight? <laughs> no weapons. This is, this is a good old pub, pub topic yeah. from uh, days of yore. <laughs> uh, so... So I, I've always established, I've, I've always maintained that I could beat a goat in a fight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Other people argue with. I think other people have been butted think, by goats yeah. or seen off by goats. Wise, and kind of, I can say, yeah, but they're really aggressive. Well, I think I think that uh, with a bit of practice, you could probably take out a cow. Um, but you okay. need uh, it would be based on technique, and you'd have to kind of twit, you'd have to throw it How basically, we, strangle we, it. <laughs> you'd have to, to strangle You've got to get really big arms to get around the well, cows. Yeah. They're not small. No, it would require a bit of practice. I think you'd, <laughs> you'd have to something to work up to. Okay. So, um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad we've got that straight. Um, what's the one question that you were hoping I wasn't going to ask you? <laughs> I'm not sure I can say that on camera. Um... I don't, and I honestly don't know. I can't think. Of, I, I, I'm not really. I don't think I'm afraid of any questions. It's probably true, actually. I've, I've known him a long time, and he's quite happy to answer pretty much anything. Um, I think I've pretty much run out of stuff. Hey, Lucy, what questions do we need to ask? If you could only keep one of your swords, which one, one sword. Would you keep? Which you have sword? to give all the rest of them away to Oz. To me, if I had okay, to, cool. or sell, or whatever. Yeah. No, no, like, no, no, all no, no, the rest to me. Of them to Oz, what do you want to deprive him of? <laughs> Um, so there's one antique sword that I probably value emotionally more than all of the others, and it was the first um, named uh, Indian Mutiny um, associated Wilkinson officer's sword, non-regulation, where I researched the owner, and it was someone who was at the Siege of Delhi, and then he um, he he died not long after the Indian Mutiny, actually, um, in an asylum, unfortunately. But I just kind of... Uh, I learned a lot about that person, uh, did a lot of research, and I actually have his diaries, uh, or I have copies of his diaries, um, which I'm slowly, theoretically, uh, tra uh, transcribing, because it's all in handwriting, it's quite difficult okay. to read. Um, from so the asylum? Or from, no, from, from pre-asylum? Yeah, yeah, he was, so he was <laughs> keeping diaries, in fact, from before the mutiny. So yeah. this is something that one day I intend to publish, because yeah. it's an unpublished Indian mutiny diary. Um, and it goes from about 1856, when he was first um, joined um, as an officer, and it goes right the way through the mutiny and after the mutiny as well. Um, covers about four four years, something like that. And he actually became the uh, ADC to the Viceroy of India uh, before he um, subsequently got sunstroke and was invalided home. So I've just kind of always felt quite... Um, bonded to that person's story and tragedy in a way uh, didn't live to be very old uh, and it's a lovely lovely sword as well um, that I probably paid a lot less for than it was worth <laughs> and um, yeah helps. so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get rid of that one I mean there are other swords that would break my heart to get uh, rid of I'll but... look after them don't worry <laughs> so if you had to have a fight with one of your swords yeah which one would you pick 
Well, it would have to be a katana because that would just cut through anything. <laughs> cut through anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all honesty, um, uh, an unarmored fight or an armored fight? In, is this one on one? Is it? Home yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? What kind of? What's the context oh, here? I, I need some context. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's try and make this more specific. Somebody is coming to your house. Uh huh. You don't know what they're bringing with them. So I'm going to fight inside. You know, you're going to fight. On the driveway outside. Okay, well that makes it easier. So I'd pick. I've got a very large longsword. It's it's a verging on greatsword. Okay. It's sharp. It's big, um, and yeah, I'd use the biggest, the biggest <laughs> sharpest sword that I okay. have. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that's um, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Take, take care, guys. <laughs>